Hey, what's going on guys? Dope Spawner here, and in today's video, I'm basically going to be reviewing the RP9 V2 kit from Bob CNC, which is the, this is the end product right here. And in this video, I'm not actually going to be reviewing the printer as a 3D printer, but in more so my experience in building the 3D printer and the parts and assembly and difficulty and things of that nature. And then I'll follow it up in the next probably week to two weeks after I've done some more heavy printing with it and actually um, give you guys a full review of the 3D printer. So let's go ahead and get into it. So we're going to do typically what I do with um, these 3D printer kit reviews, which I haven't exactly done a lot, but um, I did the Flogertech 2020, so I'm going to stick with that kind of um, structure, if you will. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to cover all the things that I really like about the 3D printer kit, and then afterwards we'll touch up on a couple things that maybe I think has room for improvement or things I weren't too crazy about. So uh, let's go ahead and start off with that. First and foremost, one thing I really like that I noticed right off the bat when I did the unboxing video was that every single item on this 3D printer kit is on a piece of paper, which I don't have, I don't think anymore, but basically uh, Bob or whoever over at Bob CNC hand checks every single item um, before shipping out, which is a huge deal, especially when you're building a kit. The point of purchasing a kit is to get all of the items together and not having to source things out yourself. And when I built the uh, Fulgur Tech 2020 about a month or so ago, um, I didn't have any M3 nuts in the build. So a little bit of, I don't know if I'd call it quality control or just, you know, a little bit of checking like that would have made all the difference in the world. So Huge fan of the fact that everything is checked individually, line item by line item. The next thing that I really liked was the actual build guide. It was very detailed. There was tons of pictures of every single step. They also were the use of animations um, with like uh, basically like stop signs for certain spots where there's things that you really need to pay attention to because they're crucial. Um, that definitely makes it nice because um, building a 3D printer kit is really not the easiest thing in the world. Um, obviously, that's going to depend on your level of knowledge with 3D printers and small electronics and just ability to follow instructions in general, but having a very detailed build log, build guide manual does make things a hell of a lot easier than obviously trying to follow some rinky-dink rinky instructions Excuse me, that um, are not very clear or straightforward. I'd also like to clarify too because for those of you that did watch my 3D printer live build um, for this kit or do watch it later on, um, there was quite a few spots where I thought items were missing or I got stuck and things were not adding up. Well, after talking to Bob about it basically, I found out that I was looking at the original version of the manual which had yet been updated. So I looked at an old manual and after actually finding the correct manual, um, nothing was missing, um, all the parts were there and everything was accounted for, so that was my fault. I should have done a little more digging or stopped when I saw right at the beginning that things were not looking according. The only reason why I even continued was because I was doing a live stream and didn't want to just be like, okay, I can't do it. Um, so yeah, everything was fine. Uh, just note that there is two manuals and I believe that if you buy a kit, you know, from this point forward, you're going to be using like the version 2 manual. So just make sure everything looks right because chances are, if they don't look right, that it's not really missing things, you're just looking at the wrong manual. Alright, so I did say when I was reviewing the last build for the Folger Tech that I liked that the Arduino was not pre programmed just because I like doing that myself. However, this board is pre programmed and I want to say that I like that as much, if not more, because the thing is, basically, you should know how to program the Arduino board. I mean, it's really plug and play as long as the Arduino drivers are there. Um, it's it's pretty simple to do in the scope of things, especially when we're looking at all the other things that go into building a 3D printer. So I enjoy doing it for the Fulger Tech. I like programming the board myself, but it was fun to do like once or twice, like I did with the, the um, DaVinci conversion. But now I'm just like, okay, I don't care to program the board myself. So it's nice, it's pre-programmed, the drivers are already installed into the correct sockets, um, the drivers for the stepper motors are already fine-tuned, the potentiometers have been adjusted to the correct um, resistance, which is awesome. Um, he also put jumpers on the end stop pins, because the ramps board has three pins for each end stop and 
um, I believe it's like uh, ground um, positive and signal. Well, the the uh, end stops that are used for this particular build only use it looks like ground and positive. So basically, he put he put he put jumper pins on the signal pin to basically ensure that you don't plug them in the wrong way or, or, or damage anything. So he made it simple. And so with electronics, the electronics um, setting them up for this is like literally effortless. There's no work to do because it all comes pre-programmed and pre-ready to rock and roll straight from the factory or from you know Bob CNC. So that's really cool. One other thing that I noticed that was pretty different um, with this kit from the last kit I put together was the amount of hardware required. I liked that it used Phillips um, screws instead of using like hex bit screws. Um, it just made it a lot easier and nicer to work with. I've got tons of Phillips screwdrivers, but I only have like one little, you know, Allen key to basically set up the other kind of screws. So that was really nice. So I printed out this little tray here for all the screws, nuts, bolts, and things like that that were going to be needed. And when I printed or when I filled it up with all the parts for the Folger Tech, every single compartment was completely filled and like overflowed. And when it came to this one, it only filled up like half of the different slots in here. So there was a lot less hardware required to assemble, which was nice. So yeah, once I filled up the screw tray, um, I kind of figured it would be a relatively simple build in comparison. And it, it ultimately it was a lot easier to assemble once I had the right manual than the other Folger Tech. Um, but yeah, I really like the fact that there's not um, any additional hardware required other than, you know, the bare bones basically. So the last two things that I really liked about uh, my experience building the RP9 V2 from Bob CNC was one, email email response rate. Uh, Bob was extremely quick to respond to my emails and I'd like to think that he does that for all of his um, you know, sales and his printers as much as he possibly can. Um, any questions I had or concerns he was very quick to address, which is huge because um, it's, you know, as much what happens after you purchase the item you purchased from a seller um, that counts. The customer service is extremely, extremely important. And I got to say that Bob definitely nailed the customer service aspect. Uh, lastly, one thing I like to say is that the parts used for this printer um, feel extremely high quality. Um, they feel like they're made well. Um, the extruder feels very nice. It's a, uh, he said, J-Head um, E3. Uh, he said it's not the V6, but it's a J-Head E3 using a Bowden setup. Um, the extruder feels really nice. And the uh, rails, the smooth uh, smooth rods, felt extremely high quality, as well as the bearings. Um, with the other kit I put together, the bearings actually required me to, I, I had to dip them in, um, submerge them in rubbing alcohol, as well as um, use some oil or, or grease to basically get them to even slide. They were extremely rough. Well, with this one, the bearings slid on without hesitation and were extremely smooth. So that's nice. Um, to me, I think that that is how it should be. And so it's nice to see that the parts came ready to work and didn't require any sort of, you know, pre-adjusting or pre-assembly in order to get them to work. So that was a, another huge plus on my part. Now there's only really two things that um, I don't even want to say are necessarily negative, but were things that I was a little bit eh about when it came to building it. And so I've currently got the DaVinci printer converted to um, Ramp Sport. I've got the Fulgertech Prusa i3-2020 aluminum, and now I've got the rp 9 v 2 well, the two printers I've dealt with up till now basically uses bolts, not bolts, belts, excuse me, to move the X and Y axis back and forth, and then threaded rods to move the Z axis up and down, which is pretty standard. Well, with this setup, um, it actually uses fishing string to move the axis back and forth, which is really cool, and it does work extremely well once you get it going. I, per I personally, though, had a decent amount of issues getting it to initially work correctly. Um, once I have it all up and going now and all my end stops are in place, like everything totally works fine. But I will say though, it's a little bit different using the fishing string. Um, it's a little bit like, I don't know if I want to say harder to work with, but in a sense, a little bit harder to work with to get it set up. But again, once you get it set up, it really does move back and forth extremely smoothly. Um, and it's high quality. I mean, uh, it's, it's really a pretty cool setup and definitely something new 
in, in my opinion, innovative that I haven't seen. I don't know if other um, 3D printers use something similar out there, but I personally have never seen it at least yet. But again, just something that was a little bit different and a little bit unfamiliar. So I don't know if I'd even want to say that's a negative or positive. Just be prepared if you don't have experience with 3D printers or if you do have experience with 3D printers that this is a little bit different of a setup in that sense. The last thing is um, one of the coolest things about this 3D printer is if you look at it, it's made out of wood. I believe it was uh, birch, don't quote me on it, but I believe I saw somewhere, um, I can't, can't recall, but I knew I saw it. And I want to say it was birch, and that's one of the coolest things about it actually, is that this thing is made out of wood, and I believe it's like CNC milled, you know, to specs and everything's cut out exact. Um, however, that being said, it is wood. And when it came to building the kit out of aluminum, I didn't have to worry about cranking things down really tight or, you know, things bending or anything like that. And I don't want to say this kit is not solid or secure because it is extremely solid and secure. I mean, I can move it, I can pick it up. It's, it's, it's extremely solid. It's not going anywhere. However, when it came to tightening down the um, nuts and the bolts and stuff like that, you definitely do not want to over clamp it because, again, regardless of how solid or secure it is, it's still wood, which means that it can splinter and it can chip if you do that. So, you just definitely want to make sure you take your time and don't over tighten and over clamp things. There's no need to. So those are the only two little things, I guess, um, you know, if there was anything to be said, but a lot of positive things. And overall, this printer is kicking butt. It's my first Bowden setup. Still getting things a little bit dialed in. Um, and I look forward to showing you guys a first print on this um, very shortly here. So on that note, uh, once again, it's the RP9V2 from Bob CNC. I will place a link in the description in case you want to find out more or purchase one for yourself. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Don't forget to smack the like button and leave a comment down below if you've got anything you'd like to say or questions, and I will do my best to personally answer them. And on that note, I am out. Peace, guys.